the two minis that I have are in opal and vanilla quartz. I think I mixed that up. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're going to go through the third drawer of my Alex 5 drawer right here, which includes all of my highlighters and bronzers. And also this glow kit that doesn't actually fit in the drawer, it just kind of does that. So if you've seen my eyeshadow palette collection video, I'll go ahead and throw that up in the cards. You'll know that the bottom two drawers are all eyeshadow palettes. So I thought it would be great to do the next drawer up and then continue and eventually get through my entire collection. So before we jump into all of my highlighters and bronzers, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you like collection videos and you want to see any more in the future. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. So let's go ahead and jump first into my highlighters. So I tried to organize them all by brand, but not necessarily by size. So up front I have two e.l.f. highlighters. This is one of their dollar highlighters in white pearl. It's kind of a bit of a misnomer because it's not actually white. It's extremely yellow. Like incredibly, incredibly yellow. I'm not going to swatch every highlighter because... I would be here all day, but you can see right there, like it's really yellow. I also have one of their baked highlighters, and this is in Moonlight Pearls. Yes, Moonlight Pearls. Like everyone says, you have to scratch off the top layer for it to actually do anything, which as you can see, I dug in a little too much, but it is a beautiful highlighter and it's super, super affordable. So I would really recommend both of these. In the next little slot over here, I have a couple of my mini. Ooh. I have a couple of my minis. First, I have a mini hourglass ambient incandescent strobe light powder, which is just a little mini highlight. You can get these at like the drive-by aisle in Sephora. I really like this highlight. I'm not sure I would ever need to actually buy a full size of this because I doubt I will ever go through a full-size highlighter ever. You get a lot of product out of here, and it was only a couple, like, I think it was 15, 10, 15 for this, and you get a lot of product in here. Um, as you can see from the swatch, there is a little bit of actual glitter in here, though. So if you don't like glitter in your highlighter, I don't think you would like the Hourglass formula. But if you want to try it out, I would really recommend getting the minis like this. They also have minis of their bronzer and of their blush as well. I have two mini highlighters or liquid highlighters right here. One is from Cover FX and it's in the shade and it's in the shade Moonlight. I love mixing this in with foundation. I never put on like a liquid highlight like by itself on my highlight areas. I always mix it into something. Next, I have this Glow Milk highlighter. I think I got this in like a birch box or a boxy charm. I've only tried it once or twice. I honestly haven't liked it that much, so I'm not sure how much longer I'm actually going to be holding on to this one. I have two liquid mini illuminators from Ulta Beauty. I actually just got these in like a free like little grab bag whenever you bought so much of the Ulta like brand products. They're brand new, they're still wrapped up, I haven't tried them out yet. I'm really excited to try them out. I'm going to try mixing them in with a couple of foundations. I have the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This one is really, really subtle. You can build it up like in a swatch right there in the middle. But on the skin it just gives you the most subtle glow. It's super affordable. You get so much product in here. You're honestly net even if you try panning this, I don't think you can. There's a lot of product in here. You can see from the dome. And it's really densely packed. So I would recommend a more dense brush to apply this. If you actually really want it to pop, go in with a dense brush and then spray it with like Fix Plus or something similar before you put it on. And then after it dries down or you put it on, spray your entire face with setting spray and it'll really pop. It's beautiful. The first highlighter I ever bought was a Too Faced Candlelight Glow Highlighter. I bought this back in the day before I even knew what highlighter was. I think this is stunning. You have like a light pinky side. This is the rosy glow one. So you have the pink one over here on the right and you have a nice light gold on the other side. And I love this side. 
I kind of sort of use this one during the summer. I really don't reach for it as much. It used to have like a little engraving right here and it said Too Faced. I've kind of worn through that as I should. I've had this for a couple of years already. <laughs> But I really do like this side a lot better. I might throw this into a project pan just to see if I can get a lot more use out of this side of the product. But again, this has a lot of sentimental value for me since it was the first ever highlighter I bought. And such a random highlighter too, right? <laughs> I thought it looked so pretty in the store. I have quite a few Becca highlighters. I have two full size. So I have the full size Shimmering Skin Perfector in Moonstone and in Prosecco Pop. So that's both of them right there. This is Moonstone, this is Prosecco Pop. I find Prosecco Pop to be a little too dark for me, except for like in the dead dead of summer. Um, but it is a full size product. I got it in BoxyCharm, so I am holding on to it. And I picked up Moonstone because I did like the formula and I wanted to try out a lighter shade. The two minis from Becca that I have are Opal and Vanilla Quartz. I'm really liking Vanilla Quartz. It's this really light, it's this really light, almost duochrome, um, like super, super light gold that I'm really liking. Prosecco Pop is a bit dark for me. So this one, I'm not sure if I'm going to hold on for it for too much longer. It is a little dark. I have one highlighter from Ofra and it is in Rodeo Drive. I also got this out of a boxy charm. It is a stunning bright gold, really, really warm. It's this shade right there. I really enjoyed this one. I honestly don't know if I would go out and buy an Ofra highlighter on my own because A, the packaging, I mean, for as expensive as their highlighters are, the packaging isn't that great. I know you get a whole lot of product in here and the product is gorgeous but it's I mean it's really steep for one of their highlighters so I think I'm fine with this one for right now I have two Fenty highlighters the first one is metal moon kilowatt highlighter this one I actually just bought not too long ago I haven't tried it out too much but it's almost like a bright white in the pan but it comes out like but it comes out as like a duochrome like it doesn't look stark white on the skin and I I love the way that it looks. So I do want to get a little bit more use out of this one. The other Fenty one that I have is a duo and it's in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. I've hit pan on one of them. It's one of the first highlighters I've ever hit pan on. I absolutely adore this highlighter. I actually put it away so that I wouldn't use it up too fast. I will probably bring it back out in like my April everyday makeup basket. I have two Jeffree Star highlighters. These things are gigantic. I have Ice Cold, which is a bright, not quite white, but almost white shade. Looks like a vanilla kind of as well. And then I have Summer Snow Cone, which is this bright gold yellow. <laughs> I find that it, you can really overdo this one. You have to go in with like a really fluffy brush and a light hand. But if you do that with like my yellow undertones, this looks stunning. I have quite a few highlighters from Wet n Wild. One of them is their loose highlighter that came from their most recent Gothic Graphic collection in Moon Tears. And also in my Z palette, I have four of their depotted highlighters. Two of them are from the most recent collection. This one is White Raven right here with the skull in it. This one is Purple Ashes. The silver one up here is Diamond Lily. And the one down here is Blossom Glow. So I depotted all of these and kind of made like my own Mega Glow highlighting palette out of them. And I'm really enjoying them. White Raven is a beautiful duochrome. And Blossom Glow is like a perfect everyday go-to highlighter. I have one of the Physician's Formula Butter Highlighters, but unfortunately, as you can see, it did break. It did crack when I got it in the mail, and it just kept breaking from there, so I don't reach for it as often because I know whenever I open it, it's kind of messy. Something that was on my wish list for so long was the Too Faced Diamond Fire Highlighter. And first, let's just appreciate this packaging. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Then you open it up. And you've got the diamond right there. <laughs> I love how it pulls almost a different shift depending on how you swatch it and how you apply it. And honestly, I just love everything about this highlighter. It's like the definition of luxe. <laughs> I have two glow kits from ABH. The first one is the Moon Child Glow Kit. This is the first one that I ever bought and I bought it back when it was on sale. It was on sale for about $20, $21. 
and it was a steal. I jumped on that. I really love Blue Ice, which is the shade right there, and Lucky Clover, which is the shade that has the green undertones to it. I, I adore those colors. I also have the Sugar Glow Kit right here. I just picked this one up actually the other day, and as you can see, I've gotten the most use out of Starburst. I really like Starburst. And I think I'm really, really going to like Marshmallow as well, the white shade down here. I think Gumdrop and Butterscotch are going to look nice, but I have to use a really, really light hand on them. And I like that in these glow kits, you can actually like remove the pans really easily. And that all the information is on the bottom. So it is super easy to depot these. And I think if I am going to buy any other glow kit in the future, I'll probably depot them and mix them up and make like my perfect glow kit. Now that we've gone through all the highlighters, let's go ahead and jump into my bronzers and contour powders. The first one I have is actually like a foundation stick. It's from Clinique. It's the Chubby in the Nude foundation stick. I got this for free when I picked up my um, like moisturizer. It's way too dark for me, so I was actually using it as a cream contour, which I don't use as often. But as a contour, it's actually not too bad. So this next one is technically called a blush, but it really is like a light-skinned contour. It's from Burberry. It's the Dark Earthy Blush number 11. And as you can see, it's got like a nice cool undertone. It's a little bit ashy, and I think it looks beautiful. I was actually using this so often, like in December, that I had to put it in here just so I could try out some of my other products. But it looks beautiful on light skin tones. I'm not sure how it would look upon dark skin tones. But I think Burberry has a couple other shades of this one. I bought this in a set. It came with like one of their mascaras, a couple of lip products, and then this. I have a bronzer from ColourPop. It's in their little case, like the individual, like the individual compact. It has a nice big mirror and it's got the bronzer right there. I got the shade. Oh, I actually can't see the shade. I, I'll look it up and put down in the description box below what the bronzer shade is. But honestly, I think I went a bit dark. This is almost too dark for me. I absolutely love like the packaging and the product, the formula itself, but I think I went too dark. So I'm not sure how long I'm going to be holding on to this one as well. Again, I have a first from Too Faced. This was the first bronzer I ever bought. Um, I actually went to an Ulta that had a visiting like Too Faced consultant one day. And that was the day that I bought the Sweet Peach palette and then I picked up my first bronzer. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Matte Bronzer in Medium Deep. Honestly, it's not that deep, but it is a nice formula. It does smell like cocoa powder, which is amazing. Oh God, it makes me hungry just smelling it. But I love the formula. I do think that I also went a bit dark with this one. I tried it on in the store and when she put it on me, it looked nice. But whenever I tried to put it on myself, it ended up looking a little dark. But during the summer, this was my go-to bronzer. And again, due to the sentimental value, I'm not sure if I would actually declutter this one just because it was my first. I have a highlight contour and bronzer set from Physicians Formula. This is the Bronze Booster. This is their only shade that they have, but they also have this in like a shimmer version, which I'm not quite sure how you would use that one. But you have like a nice matte cream shade for setting. You have an ashy tone for contouring and you have a warm tone for bronzing. As you can see, I've not really touched the warm tone, but I've used the heck out of the ashy and the light setting like under eye powder tone. I do love that shade for setting the under eye and I like the contour but I don't know why but I've hit a little bit of like hard pan in there in the contour shade so it hasn't been picking up product as much anymore. I think I'm gonna have to go in either use duct tape or like scrape off that layer just so I could use it again because I really did like the shade and that tone. I'm not a huge fan of the bronzer. I think it pulls just a little too orange on me but I do love these first two shades. If I wasn't lazy, I would probably depot the first two shades, but I'm lazy. This one I just went through in my most recent everyday makeup basket. It's from The Balm. This is the Take Home the Bronze. I think they renamed all of these because now when I go on the website, they all have different names, but this is the Oscar shade and it's the lightest shade that they came out with. I've been using this one a lot recently in my everyday makeup basket and I'm really liking it. The formula is nice and it doesn't like it doesn't look 
Orin, which it does brand itself as an anti-orange bronzer. I really like taking this into the hollows of my cheeks and my jawline. For some reason, I don't like the way that it looks on my forehead. I'm not sure if that's because I just have a little bit more texture on my temples. So maybe if you have more texture on your cheeks, you might not like the way that this applies. But that's just what I found that happens to me along like my forehead and my hairline. But I am enjoying this along my jawline and in the hollows of my cheeks. I have one bronzer from e.l.f. and it is their bronzer in Cool. As you can see, I haven't ever actually really dipped into this. <laughs> I used it once in my makeup or er, in my boyfriend chooses my makeup challenge. I'll go ahead and throw that up in the cards if you missed it. But I haven't reached for it at all. It hasn't even crossed my mind. I'll have to break this out again and try it out a few more times. I have a Smashbox contour palette. I actually bought this back when it was on the Weekly Wow at Sephora. So I think I only paid about $17 for this, which at that price, completely worth it. I love it. I love this light shade over here for setting the under eyes. As you can see from the palette, I've used the heck out of that contour shade. I think it is my perfect shade. I was using it so often that I, again, I threw it in my drawer just so I could get use out of some of my other products, but I really do enjoy this one. I don't reach for the bronzer in the middle as much, but it is a nice shade. It doesn't look orange and it applies well. I do like the formula on all of these powders and I would highly recommend this, especially if you can get it at that sale price. Last but not least, I have my three contour palettes. I have the cream contour palette from ABH that I actually picked up at TJ Maxx. I just picked this up from TJ Maxx a little while ago and I've been trying to get more into cream products, but honestly, I don't feel myself reaching for this too often. I think I'm gonna have to do a challenge, maybe do a, a video or a series and just challenge myself to reach for products that I otherwise wouldn't reach for. Who knows, maybe I'll throw this in a project pan. If you use this palette or if you use any cream contour products, you know, let me know down below. How do you get them to work for you? I have the Cult Favorite Kat Von D Shade and Light Contour Palette. I've actually used the heck out of the first skin tone shade right there and that first bronzer shade. I don't touch these two shades at all. Like, at all. I've actually looked into buying, because this is the refillable palette. As you can see on the back, there's little holes here. So you can open up a paper clip, poke it through, and the actual pan will pop out. So you can replace them when you use them up, or switch it up. So I was actually thinking of buying another one of this shade right here, which is Levitation. And put it right here where this orange shade is that I never use. And then maybe getting another one of the bronzer shade that I actually use and replacing this one. Because I get no use out of these two pans at all. So really, I, I would have been fine with just these four. But, you know, overall, I'm not, I don't regret getting the palette. I do love the formula. I do love how the powders look. And I do get a lot of use out of it. Okay, last and least, I have the Clay Play palette from Tarte. I purchased this quite a few months ago. It's the original palette, not the new one that they came out with. As you've probably known from my other videos, I am no longer purchasing from Tarte, but I am using up what I currently have, and this is actually one of my favorite palettes of all time. That contour shade in the middle, that ashy color, is perfect, and it blends out amazingly. Like, it's one of my favorite shades ever. The eyeshadows are actually really blendable and they work out really well. And you can use any of those big pans of eyeshadow as highlighters. So this really is a good all-in-one palette. I really need to throw this into a project pan. This might be my next project pan after I finish the Marc Jacobs one. I think that's what I'm gonna do. So most likely, if I finish that Marc Jacobs one before the end of the year, I'll probably start my 2019 palette early and odds are it's gonna be this one. So those are all of my highlighters, contours, and bronzers. Thank you so much, guys, for hanging out for this video. If you like collection videos and you wanna see the rest of my collection, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and let me know down below what you guys wanna see next. We have foundations, we have concealers, we have lip products, we have glitters, we have primers, we have powders, we have so, so much that we can go through. So don't forget to let me know what you, what you want to see next down below, and I hope I'll see you in my next video. Bye!